you very much. Um, thanks a lot for the invitation to this workshop. Um, I will talk about <coughs> Kitaev materials and I will mainly focus about three-dimensional versions of these Kitaev materials and I will also focus on ordered states in these materials. So not much of spin liquids here. And in this talk I will argue that ordered states on three-dimensional versions of honeycomb lattices, so-called harmonic honeycomb lattice series, can be fully mapped under certain circum circumstances to the two-dimensional honeycomb lattice, so to ordered states on the two-dimensional honeycomb lattice. This is the outline of the talk. I will give a little bit of an introduction and then discuss this mapping between states on the three-dimensional lattices to states on two-dimensional lattices. This, uh, this, this mapping is quite general and, and, and uh, in fact applies independent on any particular modeling. So it's not really for just, just uh, constrained to Kitaf systems, but uh, maybe it's at least that's one of very interesting application. Uh, and, and that's what I'm doing the third step uh, to, to apply this to heisenberg kitaev and so-called gamma models on the hyperhoneycomb lattice. <coughs> hyperhoneycomb lattice is one of these three-dimensional extensions of the two-dimensional planar honeycomb lattice. This mapping applies exactly in the classic limit under certain circumstances that I will explain, but not exactly once quantum fluctuations are taken into account. And if I have time left, then, then I will discuss a little bit of what quantum effects do to this 3D to 2D mapping. So since we didn't have the, the overview of, of, uh, of Kitaev materials, let me spend a few words on, on Kitaev systems in general. The Kitaev honeycomb model is a spin model of spin one half fermions on the honeycomb lattice. And the nice thing is that, first of all, it's frustrated in the sense that uh, there's a large classical degeneracy of ground states. And second of all, it's exactly solvable. And the exact solution is very interesting. It's a quantum spin liquid. It's a system which is effectively described by gauge theory. And this gauge theory uh, can, be, uh, can be understood in terms of Majorana fermions interacting by a via Z2 gauge theory. And <clears throat> this, 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 the, the very basic concept of, of this model can be understood as follows. Consider the honeycomb lattice and consider every third bond different from, from all the other bonds. So we basically divide the honeycomb lattice into three types of bonds. And these bonds I call X bonds, Y bonds, and Z bonds. So these are the yellow bonds, the red bonds, and, and, and the white bonds. And on each of these bonds, I have a different type of an interaction. On all these bonds, it's an easing interaction, but the quantization axis is different. And that, in fact, causes the frustration of the spin model. On an X bond, I have a quantization axis along the X direction. So the interaction is just SX, SX. It's just the nearest neighbor interaction in this simplest model, in this, this Kitaev model. While on, on a Z bond, I have a nearest neighbor SZ times SZ interaction. So easing interaction with quantization axis on this, uh, on this, in the Z direction. And eventually on, on, on the red bonds, the Y bonds, I have a quantization axis along Y. So that's, that, that's my one minute introduction in, into the Kitaev model. We would have probably, we'll, have, we'll hear more about that in the coming talks. Of course, the question is, is this somehow realized in some type of materials? And uh, as far as we know, it's not exactly realized. Because in all types of materials so, that we know so far, there are other types of interactions which also come into play. But one type of material that has been discussed a lot in the last couple of years is alpha ruthenium trichloride. It's a layered material of honeycomb layers. It's a mod insulator uh, with spin one half effective spin one half degrees of freedom sitting on each of these sides of, of these honeycomb lattice. So effectively, I can maybe describe this as a two-dimensional model. It has been argued uh, 
that the KTIF interaction is very strong in this material. However, there are other interactions as well. And if I look at the phase diagram as a function of temperature and uh, the, 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 an external magnetic field, for example, then at low fields, there is a near temperature towards some ordered state. And it turns out to be some antiferromagnetic zigzag ordered state. However, this nail temperature is comparatively large when I compare it to uh, the Curie-Weiss temperature. And there already we see there, there is some type of frustration mechanism at work here. Even more so if we apply a magnetic field in plane, or at least with some significant in-plane component, then this order is completely destroyed, giving way to some paramagnetic state. And uh, the, the, the nature of this paramagnetic state actually is, is under strong debate right now. I'm not, I'm not going into this. This talk, I will discuss ordered states, such as the zigzag ordered states on, and other ordered states on other types of lattices. In fact, the Kitayev system can be defined on any tri-coordinated lattice. In two-dimensional, there's interesting physics also on the triangular lattice, for example, and with possible material realizations. In this talk, I'm going to focus on three-dimensional versions of the honeycomb lattice, the so-called harmonic honeycomb lattice. And in fact, there's a whole series of, of this family, which are all tri-coordinated, and uh, wh which can be characterized by, by a natural number n, let me call that n. So for n equals zero, this is the so-called hyperhoney lattice, and n counts the number of closed plaquettes in this lattice. So n equals man one, that's the H1 lattice, the so-called stripey honeycomb lattice, that has one closed plaquette, and it's an extent, I mean, it's in the same family now for n equals one. And uh, if I go now to n equals infinity, there are n number of closed honeycomb plaquettes. And that's the limiting case, and, uh, uh, which is effectively, again, two-dimensional. And at least for these three situations plotted here, we also know of material realizations, mod insulators, that crystallize in, 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 these, in these lattices. And uh, the main example here are the different polytypes of lithium iridates. Uh, so while, while alpha ruthenium trichloride is a, is a layered, layered uh, planar honeycomb material, uh, alpha lithium iridate has the same structure, but the beta and the gamma polytypes, uh, they, they crystallize in the hyper honeycomb and stripe honeycomb structure. So while the alpha ruthenium trichloride has the so-called zigzag ground state, these lithium iridate uh, compounds, they typically crystallize in some incommensurate spiral order. And, and here is, here is some, some plot of these spin configurations. You don't have to uh, remember how, how this really looks, but you, you need, what you need to remember is some incommensurate state with, with some counter-rotating spirals. And in fact, what I'm going to argue in this, in, in, in this talk is that while it has been experimentally observed that in fact alpha and beta and, and also gamma lithium iridates have share se several characteristic key features in their magnetic order, this is not a coincidence. In fact, these two states of, of alpha, lithium, uh, alpha lithium iridate and, and beta lithium iridate can be adiabatically connected to each other. And this mapping I will explain in this talk. And if considered with the same parameter set, in fact, one can show that the, the states that are connected to, it, to each other via this 3D, 2D equivalence have exactly the cl same classical energy. And that leads to exactly the same classical phase diagrams. And, and also in the classical limit, therefore, some observable quantities are the same, such as, for example, the dire direction of the moments in these two systems. And even Magnon bands, so excitations in linear spin wave theory, at least uh, when projected to some two-dimensional space, they are the same. Uh, of course, in the three-dimensional system, the Brillouin zone is larger, I mean, it has, has a third direction, and, and therefore uh, only, only on, in, this, in, in this projected way, uh, the Magnon bands are the same. 
because of uh, uh, because of this three this prionism here being three dimensional, once we include fluctuations, either thermal or or, or quantum uh, fluctuations, this exact equivalence will break down. I'll, and, and if I have time, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, explain how. The crucial ingredient, however, on this equivalence is that both lattices are bo have coordination number three. Yes, Natasha. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, and I'll show an exact uh, I'll show an example in a minute. So the main ingredient here is that both actually have the same coordination number. And this is different from other type of families uh, of, of lattices in different dimensions, say the hypercubic lattices. There, the coordination number changes with the dimension, and, and therefore there will be no such uh, exact equivalence. But here, this can at least happen. Because, because the coordination number is the same. Okay, so let me now discuss this mapping, uh, starting with a very simple example, the, the zigzag state, uh, so-called SKU zigzag state on hyperhoneycomb lattice, mapping it to the planar zigzag state. Uh, and I will choose as a specific example the hyperhoneycomb lattice system, Although I should emphasize that this 3D to 2D mapping actually applies to all members of this harmonic honeycomb lattice series. So here's the so-called SKU zigzag state. Uh, there are uh, uh, ferromagnetic chains uh, along such uh, zigzag chains uh, uh, which point into some direction while the, the neighboring chains point into uh, the, uh, the, uh, the opposite uh, spin direction. Uh, this is not the ground state of beta lithium iridate, but in fact, that can, uh, this, this state can be induced by a very small magnetic field. If you rotate this lattice, view it just from a different direction, in fact, what you see that it looks as if it were a honeycomb lattice. And in fact, that, that is the basic ingredient of this, uh, this uh, 3D, 2D uh, equivalence, is that when you now consider a single site in this particular state, it has identical neighbors compared from here to here. You see, for example, this, this blue arrow has one red or arrow and, and two blue arrows similar to here. So there are states which do not distinguish between, between being uh, living on, on a three-dimensional lattice or on the two-dimensional lattice. And if I consider for, for a moment just a nearest neighbor model, then they will have identical classical energies. That's a very simple example here, but I will show actually that even much more complicated states will have the same behavior. And even generically, there will be such states which can be mapped in this way. And these states we will call quasi-2D states. So this means that states that are separated by, in, in this case, the, 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 the magnetic, uh, uh, the, the lattice, sorry, the, the crystallographic lattice vector B, are magnetically equivalent. And that, that means that if we look from this direction, there is no difference between the states that, that, uh, that lie on top of each other, and so they can be identified. That's, that's the basic observation. So whenever we have a state which fulfills this requirement, that states that uh, lie on top of each other when viewed from the B direction are equivalent, then we call this a quasi-2D state. Okay? And in fact, it turns out that in there is an, a, an alternative understanding in the reciprocal space. So here is the Brion zone of this hyperhoneycomb lattice. Uh, it's a complicated object, uh, but if, uh, if, for example, here is again the, the, uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the sorry the reciprocal lattice vectors. If we now consider just the uh, the uh, plane where B the component along B direction is zero, 
so the AC plane in this reciprocal space, then those are the, correspond to the states which do not have a, uh, uh, a propagation vector along the B direction. So they do not have any modulation along B in real space. So quasi-2D states are those states for which the ordering wave vector lies in the AC plane. They do not have a modulation along B, and this is what we defined as quasi-2D states. And now, let us look at all high symmetry points that are marked here in this Brillouin zone. First of all, of course, the gamma point, the Z point, and this X and Y prime point are obviously in the AC plane. So they don't have a B component, they don't have any modulation along uh, the, the, the B direction. However, also, T and Y they can be mapped via a, uh, translated by a, a reciprocal lattice vectors to uh, this uh, quadrangle here. And therefore, they are equivalent to B equals zero. They are effectively also modulo reciprocal lattice translation in the AC plane. And therefore, also states which have ordering vectors at these high symmetry points also will not have a modulation along the B direction. So these are also quasi-2D states. So <clears throat> quasi-2D states are those states which have ordering wave vector in the AC plane, modul modulo reciprocal lattice translations. And in fact, at least for all those high symmetry points that are marked here, this happens to be the case. So whenever we have a state which has an ordering wave vector at, at some of these points, this is a quasi-2D state. And that's basically the reason why most of the states are quasi-2D and can be mapped to 2D, uh, 2D lattice. Okay, so that's, that's kind of the general picture. And now I'll, I'll apply this to the honeycomb, uh, honeycomb system, or hyper-honeycomb system. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> Here is now the phase diagram of the heisenberg kitaev model in a magnetic field. So again, we have uh, the, the, this Kitaev term, that's basically uh, this model. But, but we know that in materials there are other types of, uh, of, of interactions, and for simplicity, simplicity let's, let me just take uh, the, the Heisenberg interaction in addition. So that's kind of the simplest model, which goes beyond Kitaev model and does have an ordered ground state. That's the classical phase diagram. As a function of this angle phi, phi is the polar angle, which, which is basically the angle between the, the J coupling and the K coupling. So uh, for phi equals zero, which, which would be this point here, there uh, we just have an antiferromagnetic Heisenberg model. And therefore, of course, the ground state is a nail ordered ground state. And then I go along this circle, then here at pi half, I have the extensive classical degeneracy of the Kitaev model, so that's the uh, antiferromagnetic uh, Kitaev model at this point. And then here at pi, I again have the ferromagnetic Heisenberg, Heisenberg model with its ferromagnetic ground state. Now, in the radial direction, now I have plotted the, uh, uh, the ma magnetic field. Uh, and, and so, meaning that, that here, uh, at, at the outer circumference, that, that is h equals zero, and the inner point, that's h equals infinity. And, and these two plots are now for either the honeycomb lattice system, that is something that had been known before, and, and, and the hyperhoneycomb system. And here are the two phase diagrams, and you already see that even though this is a very compli fa complicated phase diagram with very many different types of phases, I'm not going into the phases here, the only thing that you should see is there are many phases, and with one small ex uh, exception, all these phases are the same. Uh, they have the same labeling, and I can tell you that they are mapped onto each other via this uh, 3D, 2D equivalence. In fact, if I put these two plots together, not only the phases, but also the phase boundaries, they match exactly. So there's an exact equivalence in this classical limit, and this even applies to multi-Q states. So uh, uh, the, 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 the star, uh, FM star and AF star phases are, are multi-Q multi uh, states, and uh, these can be uh, 
uh, e even such multi queue states can be mapped onto each other. Yes, please. Uh, is, why the boundary between ferro and anti-ferro doesn't go through zero? I would expect that if k is zero, then uh, the, for any positive j, it would be under ferro again, for any it would be ferro again. But yet your boundary is also displaced to the right. Uh, you, you mean this boundary? So that's the h equals infinity. Uh, that's h equals infinity. So it's not the center of the circle. No, sorry, sorry. This is this is uh, uh, this is Heisenberg. So let me go back. This is Heisenberg. This is again Heisenberg. This is this is the k type. But let's go horizontally from pi to my from 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 from, from zero from to pi. Point to this point. Okay, that's that's the magnetic field. That's the magnetic field. So here. You apply a magnetic field to an anti nail antiferromagnet. So if, if your right, so if uh, your h is zero, that's the center of the circle, right? No, no, no. That's h equals infinity. So h equals zero. That's the boundary. Yes, please. Is there possible, or is there in real situation, it's only k constant, so it should be two, the measure for the constant, is it correct? Uh, sorry, I didn't get the question, I guess. For realistic materials, uh -huh. they also an isotropy. Yes, yes. For realistic materials, there may be an anisotropy uh, between, uh, say, kx, ky, and yes. kz. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's true. That's true. And we neglect it here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, if no further questions, then let me just again emphasize that even if we have multi q states, there is, a, there is this 3D, 2D equivalence, and the phase boundaries, they map exactly. Sorry, so yeah. you have this anisotropy, so let's stay with this kx, ky, kz. Uh, does it still hold all what you are doing, even with anisotropies in the Kidai uh, bonds? I think so, yes. So you don't need the C3 symmetry to, to get all this uh, mapping? No. no, no, I don't need it. I don't need it. Yes. Yes, that that is also possible, and uh, that that, however, if you go to further neighbors, I mean, say, I, I think third nearest neighbor, maybe that happens already at next nearest neighbors, they not necessarily map to next nearest neighbors in the in in in, in the two-dimensional model. So they can map, for example, to to uh, uh, to uh, say next nearest neighbors map to next and fourth nearest neighbors. So that can be a little bit more complicated. The model on, on the planar model is not always the naive planar model that you would think, and we'll also see that if we add gamma term. But there is there is a planar model that that can be uh, that, that, that has the same ground state with the same classical in energy, and it, it can be a It's not mappable anymore. Pardon me. If you have a finite gamma term, then it's not then this mapping is broken. Uh, there is a mapping. Yes, uh, and however, as we shall see, that, uh, okay, I'll come to that. That, that will be. I, I also question. Yeah. But the direction of the field is in. Okay, yeah, <laughs> very good. The direction of the field, of course, matters. Matters a lot because it's spin orbit coupled. And here it's, it's in the 1, 1, 1 direction, which, which means, which means in, in these materials is the direction perpendicular to the honeycomb plane. So this mapping is not independent of the direction of the well, you have to have both, I mean, in both cases, you have to have the same direction. There's a fixed uh, x, y, z coordinate system, and within this coordinate system, in, in both cases, you need to apply, the, in this case, in one, one, one direction. But you can, you can, I mean, I can show you plots uh, where, you, uh, where, where we have computed the same phase diagram for other field directions, and they also map. So the mapping, the mapping, uh, the mapping also works for other field directions. Do you mean other high symmetrical directions? No, any, 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 any direction. Okay. So let me just uh, flash you that there is a, a, an exception, and that's the so-called 3D spiral phase. Uh, this is the only phase which only occurs in the hyperhoneycomb K, hyperhoneycomb lattice, but does not occur in, in a planar honeycomb lattice. And in fact, if we plot the spin direction of this classical ordered state, in fact, we see that... Uh, sites which are separated by B direction, that would be this purple and this orange uh, 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 spins, uh, 
they are inequivalent and therefore obviously not a quasi 2D state and therefore the 3D mapping does not apply, the 3D 2D mapping. You also see that at the ordering wave vector is not at one of these high symmetry points that are marked here, but it's somewhere in between, it's not in the AC plane. So this is a true 3D state. This can also occur, and therefore the phase diagram in that region will, will differ. Okay, so let me now uh, spend a few minutes on, on, on gamma interactions. Uh, in a hyperhani complex, uh, uh, gamma interactions actually, uh, uh, well, they're a little bit different. And, and the reason is that there are different types of X and, 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 and Y bonds, uh, in, uh, just crystallographically, because, because not all X, for example, the, the green bonds, uh, they're not all parallel. And therefore, in principle, interactions can be the same, uh, can be different on, on these different types of bonds. So what is typically done in the literature is to, uh, to assume that the same local environment somehow leads to the same uh, uh, interactions. And if we do that, then GABA interactions, in fact, have an alternating sign structure in this hyperhani completus case. So the GABA interaction would be negative on such kind of bond, while uh, there's a relative, relative minus sign here, while a relative plus sign on, on, on these other type of bonds. So if we now then choose the simplest model which would, uh, would be consistent with this requirement, that, that, would be, uh, uh, that would have this alternating sign structure. And that would mean that also, yes, thank you, that would mean that we all would also have an alternating sign structure in, in the corresponding planar model. And, and therefore this, this, this phase diagram has, had not been computed before, but uh, if we compute it in fact, uh, what, what we see is that, again, there is the same, with some exceptions, the same uh, uh, phase diagram with the same, exactly the same phase boundaries. There are some th uh, true 3D states somewhere above here, but most importantly, there is, so here's, I put them two together, they're exactly the same, in particular in, uh, in, in this region here, which is marked by, rel uh, by yellow, which is the region where we believe that the material uh, beta lithimeridate sits. That's in fact, this is incommensurate spiral state. And since I don't have much more time, let me just tell you that we can now understand what is, uh, wh why this incommensurate spiral, or what, what, what is this incommensurate spiral in, in the two-dimensional model. So there is a 3D, 2D equivalence of the state, which can be mapped to a planar honeycomb uh, uh, lattice. That's a non-coplanar state. It's a state of counter-rotating spirals. But in fact, there is a duality transformation, which rotates the spins by some angles pi half or three pi half about the z-axis in this uh, cubic coordinate system. And this maps this dual version or this, this two-dimensional equivalent version of this so-called period three state, which is the state which is a nearby state uh, of this incommensurate and spiral state, uh, and, and, and Natasha will tell you more about that this afternoon, that maps this state via a duality transformation to a 120 degree state of the heisenberg type gamma model. And that, that is now really the heisenberg type plus gamma model without any alternating Stein structure. So via this duality transformation, we, uh, we, we can map this nearly, uh, well, this, this uh, counter-rotating spiral state uh, of the heisenberg type plus minus gamma model to the 120 degree state of the heisenberg type gamma model. So in this guise, this experimentally observed uh, state is, 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 is something like, like a twisted version of uh, the 120 degree state. Okay, uh, and, and, and with this duality, we can explain, in fact, uh, several characteristic features of this uh, beta lithimeridate that, uh, that the zigzag chains are of, ha, have coplanar spins. In fact, that they are counter-rotating is also a, a, a feature of this 120 degree state. Even that experimentally, uh, the, the, uh, the, the, the angle between nearest 
uh, sorry, next nearest neighbor spins is close to 120 degree. Uh, that is also something that is observed experimentally, uh, more or less. Okay, uh, so I probably won't have time to uh, discuss quantum effects, but let me just show you the Magnon bands uh, in the three-dimensional Brillouin zone and the two-dimensional Brillouin zone. And the only thing you should see here is that if we have a path, which is the first half of this, of, of this plot, within the AC plane, the Magnon bands completely coincide. Of course, there are, uh, uh, there are points in the Brillouin zone which cannot be mapped to the two-dimensional Brillouin zone, and therefore uh, there are uh, 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 energies here which do not occur here, but not vice versa. And that, of course, leads to that quantum effects, once we include fluctuations, for example, uh, in, in linear spin wave theory, this is now the staggered magnetization, the order parameter as a function of this angle phi, this polar angle, that will be different, in particular, once we're close to the Kitaev point, uh, between the two-dimensional and three-dimensional case, because generically, quantum fluctuations are larger in, 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 in the two-dimensional uh, uh, in a two-dimensional case, and that's also something that we observe here. So let me conclude. I have argued that there exists an equivalence between states on the three-dimensional harmonic honeycomb lattice and the two-dimensional planar honeycomb lattice. And this applies to all so-called quasi-2D states. These are states which have ordering wave vector in the AC plane. This leads to largely identical phase diagrams in the classical limit. I've shown you this explicitly for the hyper honeycomb and planar honeycomb lattice system, but I will argue, uh, I can tell you in, in private that in, in fact this can be extended to full harmonic, full harmonic series. And this uh, as, uh, establishes in fact the equivalence that had been observed earlier in, in lithium iridate poryl types between the different so-called uh, counter-rotating spirals which can be now mapped onto each other adiabatically. Thanks a lot for your attention. Thank you.